Hi, I'm Tom W8JI, and this video shows an AL572 amplifier, which is neutralized. It's four 572Bs in grounded grid, and uh, it this video will show you the, the how to tell if the amplifier is not properly neutralized, and also how to correct this amplifier. This video also applies to other amplifiers. I'm using an ICOM 746 Pro driven by a, a audio tuning pulser and that's driving the AL572B amplifier. I'm tuning the plate through resonance and you can see that the power level on the radio as I tune the plate control, uh, of course the output of the amplifier is changing, but if you look at the uh, radio um, you'll see that the radio SWR and the radio power level is going up and down as I run the plate through resonance. This is a sign that the amplifier is far out of neutralization. This little uh, manufactured coaxial capacitor here is actually the neutralizing capacitor. It has a metal uh, wire up through the center, a number 8 gauge wire up through the center, and then a brass sleeve that fits over the outside of the Teflon. And as that is moved up and down, it controls the amount of feedback capacitance in the neutralization circuit. Okay, now to neutralize this amplifier, I decided to uh, do it passively. By passively, I mean I don't have any power, uh, any uh, AC line power going to the amplifier at all. The amplifier is cold. And uh, this will work with the 811. I've got another video where I neutralize an AL811H and I did it while the amplifier was hot. But this passive method works just as well or better. Uh, it may take a little longer to set up, but it actually works better. And it's completely safe for the, um, uh, for the uh, user to um, neutralize the amplifier. Uh, all is required really is your regular radio transceiver or receiver, the amplifier, an external power supply that lets you activate the, the uh, relay inside the amplifier so the amplifier is in a transmit mode. No power is applied though other than that low voltage to activate the relay. And then of course you need some kind of signal source. It could be a little mini VNA or it could be a signal generator and then you want to run that device through a 10 dB attenuator pad it doesn't have to be 10 dB it could be 6 dB or 8 dB or uh, 12 dB or whatever you happen to have around there I use a 10 and the reason I do that is to make sure the signal source is 50 ohms and match to the output of the amplifier we want to tune the amplifier normally um, uh, before we do all this. Now I'm a big fan of clip leads and resistors hanging in the, in the air and things like that. That's just kind of how I roll, but this is how I activate the amplifier in my test setup. Okay, so this is with the radio being used as a receiver. I have the amplifier uh, in the operate position to do this test. I leave it in the operate position. I'm going to peak the plate control uh, so I'm sure that I have maximum signal level uh, going uh, from the test generator back into the radio receiver. So I peak the plate control for maximum signal level here. Now I'm going to pull a cap off a tube and see if the signal level gets stronger or weaker. So I pull a cap off a tube, and the signal level gets weaker. So I'm going to pull a cap off a second tube. And when I pull the cap off the second tube, the signal almost goes away. This tells me that MFJ, when they ship this amplifier out, uh, has uh, not enough neutralizing capacitance. It's neutralized for two tubes. It isn't neutralized for four tubes, so I need more capacitance in the neutralizing capacitor uh, to make this thing null. So my first attempt here was I slid the uh, brass down uh, 
on that neutralizing capacitor down lower toward the circuit board because that increases the capacitance. So I've got as much capacitance as I should be able to get out of that capacitor without getting the brass too close to the circuit board. And I still, as I do this test and I connect and disconnect tubes, I still see that I have uh, far too little uh, neutralizing capacitance. And still, with the maximum possible capacitance on that capacitor, it is not enough to neutralize it. This tells me that MFJ, and I know this is hard to, hard to grasp, but it tells me that somewhere they've changed something in manufacturing and the neutralizing capacitor in this amplifier does not have enough capacitance to neutralize four tubes. So let's dig into that and see why this amplifier can only be neutralized for maybe three tubes, two tubes or three tubes, and then it runs out of capacitance before I get to the fourth tube. This is where the neutralizing capacitor is soldered to the uh, circuit board. I'm going to desolder this solder connection right here. And then that lets me extract the neutralizing capacitor. And I'm holding the brass sleeve. I'm going to pull the uh, center insulation and, and the uh, number 8 wire out of the uh, brass sleeve and put it down here on the bench. I have to find out why this capacitor doesn't have enough capacitance. So I'm pulling the number 8 wire out of it. This number 8 wire is supposed to bottom out, be able to bottom out uh, on the um, insulation inside this Teflon sleeve and still be connected to the circuit board. And I can see that it's way too short. I'm gauging it here with, a, um, with an Allen driver and I can see that the that the number 8 wire was cut way too short at the factory so the neutralizing capacitor never would work right in this amplifier. I don't know how many are like that but this one certainly is. So I have to put a longer number 8 wire in here that will let me connect to the circuit board and still attach, um, um, still be able to bottom out on the uh, Teflon so I can slide that brass sleeve up and down the outer sleeve uh, and get a lot, get enough capacitance to neutralize. So I've added a longer sleeve in here and I've temporarily soldered it back in to see how it works. Now we're back to neutralizing again here with this and look at what happened by using a longer number 8 wire, the correct size. Now if I pull a plate cap, here we go, the signal level came up. So it tells me when I put all four tubes in the signal level drops down that tells me it's almost neutralized so uh, that's a good test you remove a tube cap you put the cap back on and you can tell by the change by the change in signal level you can tell whether it's almost neutralized or not now I've neutralized the uh, amplifier passively I've got very little feed through signal on it and I'm doing my tuning test again with the amplifier activated. Everything's back to normal. I'm tuning the plate. Now look at the radio when the amplifier is activated. Same radio, same amplifier, but it's neutralized. And as I tune the plate control, there's no change at all on this radio, on the input SWR, or on the power level of the radio. I've completed neutralization of another amplifier, in this case an AL572B, or an AL572, um, using a passive adjustment method. This method will work in the AL811H, but you have to re remove the plate caps from the two tubes uh, furthest from the neutralizing butterfly. You can't remove the plate caps on the uh, tubes connected uh, closest to the neutralizing butterfly or it won't work correctly. So you can use this method on your AL811H to passively adjust the neutralization. Thanks for watching this uh, video. I hope this helps people uh, maintain their amplifiers and get their amplifiers working properly out in the field.